Hey, hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today we are taking a look at uh, Core Gadget and the new Stockholm Gadget, which is uh, by reason and um, it's like the Dr. Octorex player. It's uh, very similar. So we'll run through the basics. Um, if I'm kind of used to this because of using reason, um, but... Uh, I'll still uh, don't know everything, obviously. So the basic thing is it has eight loops loaded in, usually. Um, you can trigger, you can you can listen to the loops by touching the screen here. There we go. Some important information, um, you see here it says what the loop is called, but it is, it's a .rx2 file. Here where it says 100 BPM, that would be the ideal, the ideal BPM for the loop, but because it's a rex file, you can speed it up or slow it down, doesn't matter. Two bars at 4.4, so two bars is the important thing, really, if you want to work with that particular loop. You'll see that some information, like that's one bar, um, if it says two bars and you want to work with the entire loop inside a track in Gadget, just set your track to two bars and then, you know, you'll be good to go. Okay, so very basically, I want to get this loop into Gadget. Copy loop to track. Done. That's it. So if we look now, we can see in our thing there that we've copied our entire loop to our track. So that when we want to play now... That loop, it just, it'll just play. Okay, so that's the easy, that's the easy, easy peasy way to do it. Okay, so let's, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll clear that. Okay, and we'll go back there. Okay, so along the bottom here, you'll see alternate frequency, filter, filter frequency, reverse, decay, level pan, uh, pitch. Okay, so... If I select pitch here, we can go like this and do some wild stuff here. We can just draw it in. Go back to preview. If I then copy that to track again, it will just play the actual. Okay, so it's a, it's a lot of fun. So if we go to pitch here, okay, and we can... Like, let's see, we want to reset our current parameters. Well, we'll reset current parameters there. We'll take your pitch down to normal. Play with the pan is fun. You know, you can kind of do all sorts of neat stuff with that. If we go to preview again. You can hear it swinging backwards and forwards. Let's just reset the current parameters for that as well. So then you've got alternates as well, which will basically, well, you can see, you can just swap and you can do all sorts of mad stuff here. So let's go to preview, sorry. That'll sort of randomize the pattern. Again, just let's reset current parameters for that. Go back to preview. And again, it's the same for each one. You can you can do the same thing for each one. Okay, so loop transpose. Well, we'll there's a little keyboard here. You'll see it's on C at the moment. We can transpose the loop by moving it up and down. See, it's gone to a uh, C sharp there. I'm still on alternate, aren't I? Let's just reset current parameters. Go back to preview. And then we can, you know, we can set our are transposed for any key that in particular we're working on because obviously some of these the rex files are instrument files as well not just for drums so you want to you're going to want to retune them to the key of your track sort of thing that that's what i you know would do or that's what i do inside reason and it kind of seems to work in here okay another thing as well another basic thing is importing your own rex files if you've got rex files and you can get rex files for free not many of them but they're there if you've got reason, you've got access to tons of the things. Um, but you can buy them from Loop Masters and stuff like that, Rex files, you know. And uh, to import your own Rex file. Okay, so this is this is how I would suggest you do it. First of all, go to user and then, sorry, um, cancel that. Go to um, user, save as, and just call it, I don't know, whatever your track is called. I would call one test and we'll just call this one dog. 
save. And then your factory banks are going to be absolutely fine, but you want to import a new a new loop. So you choose a loop somewhere. We can do this one here. And you tap on the little name of the loop thing there, like this, and you go to import. And wherever you've got your Rex files stored, I've got mine in Dropbox. And it'll look for Dropbox, and it'll look in all your files in Dropbox. And then we can go down to where it says here. And I've got, I should have called it A, Rex files, but there it is, Rex files. I downloaded a couple of free things from the internet just to show this. So orchestral drama. It, they come in actually AFF wave and Rex 2 files as well. We want Rex 2, obviously. So I don't know. I Let's see. There's only a few in each pack sort of thing. There's a free freebies. Uh, let's see, try this one. And uh, it's a done deal, basically. So there it is. Select it and... Now you'll see that this is four bars and four four. So ideally, if I want to work with that string section, I could go back there, increase this to, let me just I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to clear that out. Yeah, because that was that other one I put in. I'm going to increase this to four bars. Okay, like this. I've done it. Okay, and go here. Make sure I'm selected here. I'm just going to copy that to track. Now, what I've done now is obviously I have my, hopefully I have my string. There they are. Now, you'll see that when you go into the editor for um, Stockholm, you'll see you can edit each individual slice. And there's lots of slices you can edit. And you can see it goes over the full four bars. And I know it looks a bit weird, but this is how this is how how it works. It, it works. It goes, looks like it's going up in incremental steps, which of course it is because it's playing each slice, you know, as a thing. Anyway, it's kind of self-explanatory. But what you can do is if we do this, and I I can't, I don't think I can squash this anymore now. But you can start to mess around with different ways of playing this. You know, you can start to start to add bits and pieces from the looping section as well, like this. I don't know how this is going to sound. And then you can start messing around with moving actual individual slices around or taking them out. You know, as much as you want to mess about with editing um, stuff, you know, so. <laughs> So you sp if you spend a bit more time, like I said, right, let's put this, that, let me just move this all the way back there. So we kind of get loop one playing over the whole thing. I really should have <laughs> these out. They're not necessary. So there you go. So that's how you can manipulate. Let's clear that out again because it's added shite. <laughs> shite. Right, let's clear that out again. We don't need that in. Okay, function. Uh, what am I doing here? Right. Stockholm, and we want to bring that back into view now. Okay, so you can double tap that, will make it bigger. Maybe that's a bit easier to see. So that's kind of how you can manipulate the actual loop like that. All right. If we go to performance, your keyboard, your MIDI keyboard, I've got this plugged in, but your MIDI keyboard won't play the entire thing. It will play the, the individual slices. This is easier to understand on a, um, a drum, a drum sound. So let's choose uh, this one. Why is the MIDI focus on my strings? Don't know. What I'm going to do, right, I'm going to change. I'm going to, to save time, I'm going to put another Rex in. Another one of these. Because I'll be messing around trying to work out why my MIDI focus is somewhere else. Right, here we go, Stockholm. Now it's going to open up with the same thing. Let's go back and let's change this to two bars. It's not logical. For this, let's do this, and right now my MIDI keyboard will trigger each individual 
See, if you watch it, as I'm playing my MIDI keyboard, you can't see the keyboard, but you'll see the slices move along like that. Wait till you get to the end so you can. So in performance mode, if we go to here, keyboard options basically, and we run the arpeggiator here, this is very cool. You can create little fills and they will record. So if as I'm in keyboard mode now or in pads mode, what, what I record will record. So if I hit our record button here and go do a counting, I suppose it will. And that's, that's now recorded what I've played in via the keyboard. Right, okay, so we'll go back again and stop record function will clear that out i mean you've got it the, the thing with the uh like stockholm or the or the rex player is the the temptation to go mental at first is really easy because there's so much you can manipulate but the thing obviously works best if you use it like everything else not go mad with it because you really can go do extreme extreme stuff with with them you know and it doesn't sound so great after all so what's this Keep it interesting. We'll choose a different track. Now, this is, uh, again, that's one bar, one bar, one, that's two bars. Very nice. Okay, so, you've, you like, where are we going now? Pads. Right, so, at the moment, it's set to slice, as you can see. And that will record as well. Um, not to go too far. It's pointless, but... Uh, as you can probably hear, that's recorded that as well. All right, so we can clear, 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 clear. And, yeah, it's done. L loop mode. It sounds exactly the same as pads mode. Why is that? That's very strange. It wasn't like that before. Oh, hang on. No. Right, let me choose a different. See, on loop mode, pads loop. I had it playing the loop earlier. It might be a bug. I don't know. Anyway, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to trigger the loop. Mm, interesting. Hang on. Yeah, it's weird. Don't know. Don't know. That should trigger the loop. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, right, so let's do let's get back to let's get back to doing it. Let's let's copy it to track. Let's go back to our actual player here. Right, let's copy that to track. Right, okay. See what I've got here? Is it a one bar loop and I've copied it to a two bar thing. So I could theoretically go back and go back and do that, but I could instead if I go to bar two, cancel. If I go to a bar two, I could start to just draw in some some stuff instead. Triggering different things. Don't know how this will sound, but you know, might sound all right. Might sound a bit weird. <laughs> Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, sounds all right. Sounds pretty cool. Right, anyway. What we've got to do now, what we can do now, sorry, what we've got to do, we haven't got to do anything, have we? Uh, synth. This is this is um, where you can actually kind of shape the the sound quite quite drastically if you want to. And again, this is another part where it can get quite, um, you can go a bit mad. But we'll just, I'll just t watch the volume a second. I'll, I'll run you through a few of the things. Right, 
So you got your filter. You've got different types of filter. But the LFO, this is where it gets real fun. At the moment, it's set on oscillator. set on filter, you can't change the filter there. Now it's set on pan, actually. What I'm going to do is automate the filter now. So this is, you can see it can start to get a little bit insane. Okay, so let's just try this. Okie dokie, so let's play again and I'll automate the filter. Bear in mind our oscillator's been automated randomly. So guys, there you go. I just wonder, I just, it's doing my head in that is. Why that's triggering, I'll oh, trigger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember. It's obviously something I'm doing wrong. Anyway, Synth Rex, right. Okay, so we've had a look at that. We've had a look at the different thing, crazy stuff you can do with the... The automation and stuff like that. And you've got, you've got a filter envelope as well, so you can, you know, shape the sound of your filter. And you've got, I think, notch, and you can see, can't you, what you've got? Oh, like that. Okay, so uh, really all it's left to do is let's have a quick blast at what you get. So what you, you don't get loads, okay? You get, like, let's see, Vox Toolkit, what's that? Let's have a look at that, shall we? <laughs> Key things to remember, guys, is the, the bars and the, the, the speed. Like I said, 100 BPM, it's a subjective thing. That's where it was recorded at, so that's where it's going to sound, uh, you know, probably the best. I wonder if... There's got to be a reason why that's happening instead of just playing the loop. Oh, you see these two blanks as well? This is where you could drop in your, you know, you could drop in, I don't know, what's this one? This is still there. Um, so that's another X file that I've just put in, and then you could save that as a, a new thing sort of thing. So what else do we get here sort of thing? Let's see. A couple of Vox Tool kits. Uh, I don't know what that is. But you see, that's very cool. But you see, then you can start adding stuff. And like I said, you don't need to actually record in information if we clear all the notes. What you can do is draw in info over as many bars as you like. So you've got your slices there. So you can look at what's like, so you can go, all oh, right, what's that? That's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Slice number six, for instance, and we could find slice number six, two, three, four, five, six, and it should be, I think, yeah, there you go. 
and then we could um, extend that and then we could go up in things like this you can do some great stuff with slices <laughs> let's go mad oh, that's a loop and we don't want a loop you've got to be careful because the loops will play the loop you know but you can have a lot of fun with kind of choppy slicey type things I don't know what this will sound like Hey, <laughs> oh, no. Right, so let's see. Um, okay, and a couple of the more things that you get. Some of them are really good, actually. You could, you could, you could certainly. They're certainly easily usable. Very nice. Like I said, remember, copy loop the track, just bang this, what you created here, straight in. Bearing in mind the bars, because it will it will want to go across its whole two bars. You don't have to set it at that particular bar size. You can set it at, you know, whatever, whatever you like, but it works. Obviously, if you want the whole loop in there, copy the whole loop over to the, to the track. bars so what you could just do if you wanted to stop there if you wanted the whole four bars of that bass line in over the vocal then you could just kind of um you could increase the size to four bars then you could just select copy and you know you could just copy them copy the whole thing over sort of thing and then you're good to go anyway like i've got on enough there's a good well it's a basic starting guide i guess for Stockholm, some of the cool stuff you can do. So me, it's, a, it's some of the interesting stuff with this. But the performance thing will record it. I just don't know why. That should play the what's it? I don't know. It's got to be something I've. Um, it's got to be something I'm doing. Yeah, seriously. Right. Anyway, listen. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, I'll put links in for gadget and stuff anyway. I think a lot of people have got it now. Uh, they're, all, they're all on sale at the moment as well, I think, the core gaps at the moment. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you like it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, consider becoming a patron, and I will see you guys later. Top job.